to episode 156 of Uncensored Minds, the world's greatest conversation. I am the prophet, along with my co host, Miss Montana tonight, y'all. What's happening? What's cracking? <laughs> <laughs> now nah, you already know what it is. No, no, daddy. Okay. <laughs> Lord help us tonight. <laughs> Lord help us tonight. <laughs> Everybody's a little all over the place. Lord help us tonight. <laughs> we gonna try to make it through. We this is what we do for y'all. So y'all should appreciate this sure. work that we putting in. Um, just bear with us. <laughs> just bear with us. Just bear with us. So um, I want to start out with a, a, a nice and easy icebreaker for y'all. So this is um, something that I'm currently um, experiencing. And I just wanted to know y'all thoughts on um, <sighs> during these times. How often do you have to wash clothes? <laughs> like, how often are you washing clothes? Like... This is something that I hate dreading, and I got enough clothes to where I might only have to go, like, once a month or something like that. But it's still like, why? <laughs> I don't feel like it. <laughs> so my question is, in tonight's icebreaker, how often do you wash clothes, and what is your favorite laundry detergent? Hmm. I wash clothes once a week. I have at least three to four loads every week. Can't go two weeks, three weeks, a month. Uh, and game, that's my favorite detergent. Yeah, yeah I'm, I'm, I'm every week, every Sunday actually, um, since that's my day off, only day off of the week. I, do, I wash clothes on Sunday morning before I start my football, you know, regimen and all that. Um, I got about three or four loads the same, you know, my whites, my blacks, I mean, my whites, my darks, and my towels. Um, M Gain is my go-to detergent. The Mountain Mist, the Mountain Morning Mist. That's the purple one. That's my shit. I love it. it is. So <laughs> fresh, isn't it? Hey, amazing. 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 All right. I was saying, um, I try to hold out for once a month just because I don't be fun like doing it. Um, but my favorite detergent is still Tide. I'm a Tide kid. Uh, I use Tide. Um, I like to use the what are they call it? The laundry sheets, the freshener sheets, mm-hmm. dryer sheets. I like to use those. Um, is there anything like? Do you have anything specific that you do when it comes to washing clothes? As we wrap up this up. Wait, real quick before we move on. What kind of dryer sheets do you use? Because Tide doesn't have dryer sheets. It depends. Do you snuggle or bounce. Bounce. It depends. I, I'll var- it varies, but uh, mainly probably bounce. Bounce. Okay. I use game dryer sheets. Do you use game dryer sheets? I don't use none of that shit. Just put pour my liquid in my jaw, and I'm cool. <laughs> now I'm getting a little wild with the games with the sheets. <laughs> well, you know, sheets will help with the right. clean. Man, give that extra boost of freshness. Right. I mean, you know. Have you seen me? <laughs> Have you heard me talk to me before? I'm a true nigga over here. I can't. I uh, all right, before we wrap this up, a thing that has, um, I would say, disappeared in life is a thing that we used to do, or I don't know if y'all still used to do it as prevalent as me, but what happened to ironing? Oh, yeah, that's a great thing. We used to iron everything <laughs> and starch it. Yeah. I don't iron shit. <laughs> I don't want no creases in my pants. Yeah. I'm I cool. still iron certain things. But you're right. You're absolutely right. Where we used to iron every single thing, um, whether it really needed it or not. Like we still was ironing, but now it just be like dryer on high so that there's no wrinkles and just throw that shit on. <laughs> y'all know me. I'm making make. I'm Mr. Make it make sense. Y'all, if y'all see me in a make 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 it make sense shirt, I probably just made it. I, I'm that's, not, that's the only reason you ain't need to I'm, I just made it so it's a fresh shirt so it don't need to be a, or if y'all see me on the weekend with something different it's probably just been taking out the, the wrapper or something like that do but. y'all use cleaners a lot? Like, do you put um, stuff in the cleaners? yeah I, I still go to the cleaners but I'm bad with I used to 
I'm I'm bad with it because I'll leave my shit in there for months on end. <laughs> but they know me, so you know they they still keep my shit nice and tucked. But I, I'm bad with going to go pick my shit up. I used to when I was working in the bank when I had to wear suits and stuff every day. But now, no, I just throw my shit in the washing machine. I'm not mad at the cleaners though. I'll, I'll do it when when necessary. Like I do it with certain specific clothes that mm-hmm. are dry clean only. Shout out to the people that clean that clean they stuff. You know what I mean? Shout out to the that's people that long, clean themselves. So. That's a long, wow. that's a lost art though. Like shout out to people who get up and clean their house on the weekend. Yeah. Shout out to the people who care about hygiene, care about the cleanliness of their clothing, and 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 just the overall cleanliness of themselves. Because that's a lost art. You you see so many different things out here nowadays. You're like, wow, what is this? What's going on? Shout out to the. You know what? Also, I know we said this. I had a debate at work the other day. Not a debate, but just a discussion. And it was about five of us guys sitting around because it was, you know what I mean, nothing much to do. And we were talking about nails, getting our nails and feet done. Guys. And I was like, you know what? We, on my podcast that some of y'all watch, we talked about the, the importance of spending good money on how women spend good money on getting their nails and feet done. And I asked all the guys around the room, they got their feet done, how much is they paying? Ladies, I don't know if y'all might be capping, but this is... This is the thing that I revealed that they only spending $50, $60 to get their feet and nails done. Right. Well, y'all only getting, getting a, a manicure. Nah, these guys was getting a gel. They had the gel on their fingers. Yeah, so y'all tell me how that's... We get, we get colors. We get uh-huh. matte. We get designs. We get rhinestones. We get we get the extras. And we get gel on our toes, too. We're in a recession, so stop the extras. <laughs> Stop the extras. This is holiday season. We can't afford the extras. Nah, shout out to y'all though. But I was I was amazed to see that this younger generation, and I was talking to a bunch of group of twenty something year olds. They really are into um, their personal care, like how they look, their hygiene, gets his feet their done. nails, their feet done. They really are into that. More or less, not so much going to the barber shop like we used to do, like we do. I see us, my generation, my people. We're always in the barber shop. And these younger, young guys don't have haircuts no more, but they are getting their nails and feet done. So I guess it's a trade-off. They'd rather have their hair looking a mess than their feet and nah, nails. they'd rather have their hair looking a mess. Um, shout out to my son who does get his feet done, but he has dreads now. So, you know, I got to smell this, like, uh, <laughs> mint tree oil shit that they use. They should keeping them up, though. You got some yeah. people that just don't care. Facts. Right. Facts. That is true. So and it's nothing worse than a man with dirty nails. Or stinky feet. So, not shout out to feet. the guys that are... Out to the you stinky feet. Can you smell mine over here? Because my shit's is not stinky. Oh, shout out to the stinky feet. All right. Well, Let you the... got your shoes on. Don't so. do that. No. If, if I was smelling your feet through your shoes now, we I would can't. have a problem. Yeah, we have a problem. We have a problem. Now, what would happen if a girl came through and her feet was stinking? Gotta go. You wouldn't smash her? I would probably stay. <laughs> but just tell her to put some socks on. <laughs> Like, yo, you gotta put some socks on. <laughs> See, the thing with me is if girls coming through, she's my lead. So right. Let's clear that up right now. <laughs> well, baby, I but I'm gonna say, babe, what's going on right now? Like, you gotta take this, just jump in the shower real quick. She went for a run. She ripping and running? No, she went for a run. Yeah. All right. <laughs> she went for a run. All right, it's time to get in the shower. You, you're a little funky. <laughs> <laughs> Ish, what happens if you are if you are sleeping with a guy and then it wakes you up? Say what now? <laughs> the foot the foot funk yeah. wakes you up. <laughs> oh, no, 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 it's no. It's I a no. Know. I don't know because that that type of thing is just such a turn off. Like it's one thing everybody's going to have some some body odor. Not not in the sleep. Not in the sleep. Because you're supposed to be taking a bath. Right. You're supposed to take a bath or a shower before you lay in your bed. Right. right, but sometimes, you know, people be dead tired and they just take their clothes off. No, and no, no, no. You cannot get in the bed yes. without nope. washing your ass. People do that every day. Sorry. I don't know what I you're know. talking about. It's not in my bed. <laughs> not, not in my bed. bed. No, Nobody's sleeping in my that's bed. That's a thing for me. Like, I, I, I have issues that's a thing. with that. Mm-hmm. Like, like outside and i know we get tired you know what i mean even if you go and you rinse off you don't have to take an extensive shower but just go and like just wash them and rinse off at, at the minimum once and and wash that outside off before you lay in the bed okay i'm not mad at it but yeah 
um, if a lady friend comes to see me and she's not tip top fresh, but I know she's not dirty, I ain't tripping. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Yeah, you ain't gotta be tip top fresh, but long as it ain't no no odors, like you know what I mean, no odor. It's cool. It is what it is, man. Thanks. I mean, plus sometimes ladies. Y'all carry a little older. Sorry. <laughs> right. You know. It's um, it's the under boob. Uh, so yeah, it's the under boob sweat, sweat for me. Mm-hmm. It's the under boob sweat for me. So you know, it's cool. I ain't, you know I ain't gonna I ain't gonna call you out on it, but I oh, I seen wow. it. I felt it. <laughs> when you said no. Oh wow. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So we were having a discussion on women in power. And how do you think that affects you? Do you think that this is a good thing? Um, would you be opposed to having a woman boss? What are y'all thoughts on women in power? So as we were talking about this, right. you know, pre- preparing to talk about the topics that we're going to talk about, I-, I shared that I had a woman boss and I had no problem with her. Um, she was cool. You know what I mean? She had her moments and her days. And that's like anybody. You know what I mean? But it was cool. I, I, I guess because she wasn't my direct direct. She was my direct manager. But still, it was a lot of different moving parts in the bank that she had to worry about. That I really didn't feel the wrath. Plus, you know, um, we come from the same culture. So we she, she had a... A, a younger son, a son that's in his twenties or something, so she got kind of more or less understand, you know, me and took me as a, more like a son instead of an employee, because we got we got we got to be close. Shout out to Tamika, what up Tamika? Hey Tamika. But um, yeah, I never, I, I don't have a problem with. It. I, I I welcome women in power. I welcome especially especially our women, our our our, our black women. I, I love to see our black women thriving and. And, and moving up into roles that um, at one point wasn't designed for them. Um, I like to see women, you know, bucking the trend and, and, and going out there and doing and becoming amazing things. Shout outs to Sherelle Parker. First black mayor. female mayor in the city of Philadelphia. She's not the first black mayor, but she's the first black female mayor which is an accomplishment. And she's actually the 100th mayor of Philadelphia, which is an even bigger accomplishment. And she has a tough task on her hands. Philadelphia is the sixth largest city in the, state, in the United States. Within itself is always going to be, you know, challenges and adversities that she's going to face. But One I'm, of the highest murder rates in the country. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Which is, not a, which is not a stat that we like to shout out all the time. But, I, I, my, you know, my full support is behind this woman because she's one of us. And, and one of the beautiful things about her story is she's a single mother now taking on the role of managing a large city and her son is young. So she is really invested in this and hopefully in the, she's hopefully she's well invested in the safety of the city because her son has to live here and grow up here and, and, and live and thrive here. So that should be you know, one of the challenges that she takes on to make sure her son has a, a, a productive, positive life in the city that she is now governing. Right. Um, I was saying that I worry about the emotional temperament when it comes to women in power because, you know, whether it be the time of the month, whether it be a bad breakup, whether it be um single parents um all of these things can play a role in how you treat or handle your power so if you're having a bad day or you're going through something now when you come in and you have these people under you you might you know forcefully put some aggression <laughs> <laughs> on them because you're going through something like i've seen it happen so I'll be very mindful of women in power just because sometimes they could be a power trip. 
Mm -hmm. What's your thoughts, Ish? Yeah, I've had good experiences um, in the past with, um, you know, women bosses and coming in contact with women in power. I've always seemed to um, have interactions where it's well rounded you know what i mean they um their temperament was good their emotions seemed to be intact they seemed to be logical thinkers it wasn't until i got into i've been in management for um 15 years and i've you know had plenty of employees under me and the one critique that i've always gotten as the as the person in charge is um how i speak to people um i'm a lot of times when i'm interacting with individuals like i have an issue with people who try to beat me in the head with the bullshit right, right? um and so therefore like when you try to do that, that's a trigger for me. Yeah, for and I'm going to talk to you like you a regular motherfucker. I'm sorry. Okay. I don't give a fuck what position I'm in. Um, and so I get where you're saying in regards to the emotional part. Because for me, that's where emotion comes into play. Like, right. here I am. I'm not being logical. I'm not being level-headed because you're trying to take me for a little sucker. Yeah. And that's what I, I... I don't do well with that. Yeah. And so emotion takes over. And I go right for the gusto. Um, and so I, I totally understand what you're saying. And I didn't realize that or even come into retrospect with that until I became in management myself. And I saw those type of things. So it can be a very slippery slope. And people can definitely blur the lines in regards to logic and emotion when managing others. So, so now, how would you feel if you had a, a female boss and... She was taking her shit out on you. No, 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 no. No, no, no. I don't care if it's a female or male. We're not going to do that. No, don't feel that dumb ass shit. Stop it. We, I haven't mastered that. That has not been something that I have been able to master. And that's not because it's a woman. I don't take advantage of male versus female. I don't back down from a man, but I will get... But no, 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 no. That's not what it... But if you taking your shit out on me and I'm like, yo, why? Then I'm going to speak up. Like, yo, chill. Like, enough's enough. Like, what the fuck you think you're talking to? Yeah. <laughs> All right, so here's my question. Um, as a kid, right, when we were in school, did you sometimes respect the, the male teacher over the female teacher? Mm -mm. Mm -mm. Uh, never? I knew there were certain things you could get away with over all female teachers. Yeah, but <laughs> you could. Yeah, you could. But I always had strong female teachers in, in class, unless it was a substitute or something. So you knew. I always was in a class where the teacher that I had was probably one of the top teachers, and you didn't play with them like that because they had a reputation or whatever the case may be. So not not too often did I try to take advantage of a teacher just because you know, because she was a female or male, you know. I mean, I, I wouldn't um, say to do that or, you know, be up for that. Mm -hmm. But I'm saying that you know that there's, like, like yeah, like you said, there was a lot of strong female teachers, but there were some female yeah. teachers who you knew was sweet. What's that? Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. I think for me, like, um, when I went to Longstreth, my aunt was... Shut up. My Not teacher. the Longstreth. <laughs> so I was, like, cool. Like, my aunt was my teacher when I was in middle school, and I went to till then. Um, my mom's, one of my mom's good friend was, like, an NTI. I don't even want to go to the so school with you, <laughs> It was always, like, yeah, it was crazy. And then when I was in Bartram Moat, one of, like, the strong teachers was my girlfriend's cousin. So each mm. school that I was in had a figure that was either close to family or family or like family. And so I knew not to play with none of the teachers, yeah, whether it was male or female, teachers. especially not the females, because all of the females were like attached to like family somehow. Mm. So I never played with none of them, yeah. not even the pushover ones. I didn't even test the waters. That was a long stretch, man. Yes. All right, so let, let's speak family-wise. Do y'all feel like y'all have more strong females or more strong males in your family? My family is definitely the females. 
I got both actually. I'm I, I come from a, a huge family. I actually got you know twelve brothers and sisters, and I got seven sisters, and they all they all with it. Like none of them is pushovers, but they they all stand on they stand on business. Um, and I got what, six brothers, so you know we all we, you know they all about something. And also the women in my family, like my aunts and my cousins and all of them, is is is, is with it too. So I like guess. It's a good mix. I look at them like, all right, I'm, you know, I can respect it. Um, I think that there's more females just in my family overall. Mm -hmm. So I have to say that it's more it's stronger females in my family than guys, just because of the numbers game. Yeah. What I will say about that though too is the large conglomerate of women typically keeps the family together because yeah. they're the ones planning the vacations or planning the trips or doing something like that or keeping their hand on a pulse where they're connecting with this group of people that they got clicked over here and this one and they're bringing them together and or just keeping the, the lines of communication open that's an and that's a real amazing trait that women have yeah so i'm not opposed to um women being in power or having power i would just say that i'm mindful of the power trip and I'm mindful of the emotional aspects that it can get to. Mm -hmm. So I'm not opposed to it, but I am paying attention. I will say I will be paying attention more to a female um, in power than a guy. I would actually love to see one female step up and, and, and assume a powerful role. That's Michelle Obama. I would love to see Michelle Obama at some point if she had the aspiration. Do you think if Michelle president? ran for president, she would win? Yes. Yeah. Yes. I don't think she would win. You don't? Uh, I think she would. And the reason why I think she would is because you got a large conglomerate of women who are out here that wants to see that. Just like we had a contingent, a, a, a big, cont uh, not, not contingent, but a big, large group of people that wanted to see a black man become a president. And they right. made that happen. Right. And now you got a whole different aspect of Michelle Obama, a woman. That already right there takes care of itself. Yeah, I don't... Then a I, black woman. I don't think that she's... I wouldn't say she's not capable of women. I mean, I'm saying that I don't think that they would allow it. It almost happened. <laughs> it almost happened. Hillary was almost that. Right, and then they did but allow that, that shit. Yeah, they didn't allow it. But I think we've broken so many different barriers so far, and I think... The country will welcome that this time. The country welcomed that this time. We had so much foolery with the, the, the past eight years. Trump, Biden. What else could go? Where else do we go but up from here? And and I and I, I could see her being that up that we need just because of her. just the when the family was in the when, when the family was in office. It just brought so much calm and it was regalness and it was just a, a level of respect there. And I think that. That level of respect, should, you know, needs to be restored as well. I'm not. I'm not opposed to it. I'm not mad at it. Um, I would just say, like, like you're saying, you're speaking of somebody of something. You're speaking of the top of the top of the top. Yeah, that's the top. So when it's somebody who's certified, yeah. I'm not mad at you're it. Not mad at it. Absolutely. Yeah, I'm not mad at it. Cause I don't. I don't know where. I don't know where the Kamala is. <laughs> where Kamala is. I mean, she Quiet as a church mom. I don't see her. Cardis cut. Speak or she on her left wing. Get dresses. Like she on the left wing chilling. As the vice yeah. president, we typically see the vice president yes. making moves. I've see always seen one. that, but I don't see that this time. Mm -hmm. And again, could that be because they don't want to see that? Right. You know, that was something that was for the moment. But do people really want to see that? Thanks. I don't think people want to see it. I want to see it, man. I want to see it. I wouldn't be mad at seeing a strong, kick-ass girl, you know, go do it. Oh yeah, I'm mad at that. Oh yeah, like look, look, just look, this is just thing. Look at the WNBA, the popularity of that within the past couple of years. Like Game Seven on Thursday nights, they had a whole segment about female basketball players out there doing their thing and who's up and coming. Like that just lets you know that that these topics are now involving women or have having to need to be had because. They out here doing anything. Go check that show out, too. Thursdays at 7 p.m. Game 7. Okay. Um, but, you know what I mean? I think the one thing that needs to also be understood is we can't lead with emotions. 
It's all I ask. Leading with emotions clouds a lot of judgment. We have to start to lead with logic and understanding more than emotions and sit back and let our emotions, you know, help us do certain things, but not let that dictate us in the way that we respond or the way that we approach such a situation. Because it could be it could be really the detriment of, of, of whatever you're trying to accomplish by just by, by being emotional of it. All right, so let's uh, get into our deep and sensitive topics. Um, this is going to be a doozy. I hope y'all buckle up. <sighs> people, tissues, people, people. <laughs> people, people, people. Um, I want to ask these two beautiful people to the left of me. <laughs> um, how do y'all feel about you know the people that you have in your life? Who is the person that is closest to you right now? Who can you vent to about anything? Who is your person? Why and how? What's up, people? Go ahead, Yish. <laughs> Go ahead, Yish. <laughs> Go ahead, Yish. I, I opened the last segment. <laughs> um, let's see now i mean you know i feel like there could be a lot of different there could be a few people for me um and the reason that i say that is because i i only i only have a few people i don't have a, a wide um friend base i have very few friends i can count on one hand um but I do have a go-to person, and I feel like she is my strongest confidant. Um, we've been friends for over 20 years, and I feel like there is a no-judgment zone with her. I can tell her anything, um, and she's not going to judge me. She is not going to um, steer me in one direction, even if she disagrees with me. Um, and so I feel like she's my person and I'm safe in that space with her. Um, and she's probably the only one fully because other people, you know, I have to maybe not say something because they might feel a certain way or I don't want to, um, lay too much on their plate because they might have a lot going on you know so you gotta gotta base your your actions with certain individuals so yeah all right now you up we're probably going to say the same thing i mean t probably want to say the same thing and i just um not that i don't have people i do and i know i do i just i'm so reclusive within my own self just because it I, it just always had to be that way right because you know, prior conversations you just don't want to upset anyone or say the wrong thing to where you have to now instead of allowing yourself to be that you know free flowing you now have to go on a clean up campaign tour to because people's feelings are upset because you, you said something that may have hurt their feelings or they don't just understand that you're just getting off your feelings and things like that and it has nothing to do personally it's just you know what you're feeling and going through at that moment so it always just meant me channeling my inner feelings myself and yes i have friends i have loved ones i have significant other who i can talk to and I understand I can talk to them. I just choose to keep it within myself because that's always been a safe place for me. And it's unsafe because then my mental health becomes. And my mental health takes um, a hit because I don't have that outlet or release. Um, would you want a person that can be your everything in that aspect? I mean, it sounds good. It sounds good to say that I, you know that oh I could I could lay this on a person and 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 be a judgment free zone. 
I can lay this on the person and it's just just going to be that. And it's not going to be, well, why you say that? Or they or, or an offense is took into it, you know, like that. Absolutely. But, you know. Ish, in a partner, would you want your person to be all of the above? Absolutely. I do feel like sometimes in partnerships, though, there's always going to be a small inkling of um, times where you're not able to fully express yourself, even if you want to. Um, but I think there will be times where you tiptoe a little bit just because, one, you don't want to either hurt feelings or you don't want to, you know, say something that could be misconstrued and taken it out of context or whatever the case may be. I always feel like in a partnership, there's going to be that small, little, minuscule space that shit like that happens. Um, I just want to say that um, I think I do want to be able to have that in my person. I want my person to be the person. Mm -hmm. So I want my person, I want to be able to to talk to you about any and everything. But that's a slippery slope because when it is your person, they have emotional attachments to, you know, some of these things that you want to mm -hmm. speak about. So it's not always a, a clear runway to express all of the things that you want to talk to them about because of the way that they're going to take it in. Like it, it would be in a real fairy tale world, you would be able to lay all of your things out on the table, and your person would just hear you. Like that's all I need you to do is just hear me. I don't need you to defend yourself. I don't need you to respond at everything. I just need you to hear me. Hear me. That's it. Hear me. And and sometimes not even not even offer up on. Um a, a, a fact that you understand just hear me because it's all I need thanks thanks alright so I want to ask the both of y'all um, hold up well what about you do you have that no do I don't have like it have, okay no I, do I don't have it aspire to have yeah, that I, I aspire to have it um, like I was saying just because the, my person who's supposed to be that has emotional um, attachments mm -hmm. to you know all of those things so we can't speak about certain things because it's going to be a trigger it might be a trigger for me it might be a trigger for her mm -hmm. so and and like i said in a fairy tale world you want that but i think in time we might be able to get there mm -hmm. but not today also i think too the moment you put down the gloves right and you stop trying to battle and everything is is looked upon as oh you're battling with that person you'll understand that it's just a conversation right. and and you can see the, the 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 perils of that conversation lending itself to y'all busting out laughing just because of something they said or you know you're not taking it serious or you're personal because they're just talking about things and you can help them to understand you know where they went wrong or, or or where they might not be seeing things that like 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 i shared on the show last week like i had to come into jesus type of situation based upon a past dealing with on another situation and i was i had the conversation and talked it out and i realized all right cool i might have i might have could have been in the right but the way i responded to somebody who i had a relationship with wasn't the right instance in that setting so they helped me to understand that. And that person dug deep and said, yo, I get it. But you was you could have you were wrong in a sense of how you handle it. But I understand why you felt that way. And that's dope because it helps you to see, you know, what I mean, our, all, for all the times we always think we're right. And then in that situation, until we remove ourselves from it emotionally and start to unwrap it. And when you have somebody that can help you unwrap your shit, um, in real time, and it doesn't always look, have to be gentle, but help you unwrap your shit to the point where it, it's helping you grow mentally. That's a that's a dope partnership. That's a dope conversation. That's a dope whatever. And then not always necessarily as a significant other. It could be a a friend. It could be a a, a family member. It, it could just be whoever you have that comfortable outlet with that helps you get back to that that point of or that zero point of all right comfortability where you can start to grow 
from each conversation that you had with that person. That actually plays into my question because my question was, what part do you think that you play in this? Do you think that you are, you know, a person who can be somebody's person? And do you think that you're open to letting somebody else be your person? Another aspect of the show. I, I like to reference things from our past shows just so it can tie in. We talked about um, counseling last week. And one of the um, the helps of counseling has helped me is to listen. I got somebody sitting on the other side of this situation listening to me. And they doing nothing but listening. And as I sit back and I'm like, damn, all I, all I wanted was somebody to listen. I need to be a listening ear to somebody else, too, because that's all they want. And I find myself just sitting back listening, not saying nothing, not offering up any suggestions, not offering up my, my critique, not offering up my opinion, just more or less listening. That way they can get their shit off. And then if they say, well, what you think? Now they're now they're op- they've opened the door to me giving my opinion or now me to say, all right, I heard you say this. This is how this is my interpretation of what you said to this or this is what I thought my opinions was to that. And that's all it basically is. I think I think we all just want to be heard. We just want to be heard regardless if it's if it's positive or negative. We want to be heard. And the more you allow yourself to be heard and somebody else to be heard, it, 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 it helps immensely because after you after you heard them, then you can say to them all right i heard you now look at it from this perspective let's go back to when you did that or let's go back to when that happened yes now look at this from somebody from the outside looking in who's not emotionally attached to that situation because whatever now let's see something that everybody else see let's or everybody else is looking at and you're like damn you know what it's my fucked up all right, Ishu, how what is your answer? Do you think that you are an easy person for somebody to open up to? And how do you think you play a role in, you know, being open to people? Yeah. Um, I feel like I'm definitely an easy person to um communicate with and to be a person like um, people gravitate to me like I'm not too in my own horn, but it's just I guess maybe my spirit or my energy like um, people definitely feel comfortable in opening up to me um, and I do feel like sometimes um, I can be a person that will equally listen um, but I am also very upfront sometimes in regards to what I respond with so a certain type of individual is going to gravitate to the way I respond I listen but when I offer um you know sometimes different perspectives to look at some people are not open to straightforward answers at times and that could be problematic that could be why I'm not um a lot of people's full person you know what I mean because um you know, even if you are putting it softly, sometimes truths and realities are harsh. And, you know, some people don't like that or don't want to gravitate to that. Um, and so, you know, I, I guess I'm like, e- I'm a teeter totter type of person. I, 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 I love, you know I, I mean? love, I love the honesty because I'm yeah. the same way. Yeah. Like, right. I, I ain't going to sit up here and bullshit it. I, I got a whole temper. And I gotta, and you said something earlier about um, the bullshit meter. You can't play with that. And yet, when your bullshit meter is, is being bullshit, yeah. you it shoot up. And that's what it is. Like I, I want to be the person that you can come to and have a conversation with. But to understand what that look like, though. Right. You dig? Understand what that look like. And all conversations don't ain't always going to go to one way. You know what I mean? And, but we both got to be willing to understand that. And that's what that's where I think the maturity comes in. It. Cool. That's, if we had an argument, it's an argument. But now, after we've had our say, what do we do to fix it? That's it? Yeah. And, and, and at the end of the day, that's all I'll be looking for. Right. 
I could we could have a scream argue knockdown. I hate you, I'm fucking tight shit. But cool, I don't really hate you. I love you. That's why I'm that's why I'm talking like this. Cause I, I don't talk to people I don't dig. I don't talk to people I don't like. I don't just do yo, you got it. And go about my BF. I don't have a conversation in detail. I don't I don't waste my energy on going back and forth with somebody if I don't care about you. So, so you did say something um very important though. Um, in order to be somebody's person, you have to be a listening ear. Mm-hmm. And you have to be a listening ear without um, critical judgment. Mm-hmm. Um, just let just let the person be heard. And then if they ask you, like you said, then if they ask you, then, you know, you can give your opinion or you can give your advice. But the main part that people skip past is the listening part. And they be listening to respond. They be listening to judge. They be listening to like bash you. They be listening to be defensive. Mm-hmm. It's like, yo, I just want you to listen. Just listen first. I think the moment some person hear you start talking about something, I think their defenses go up and they right. think you're being defensive when you're in your emotional state. So you're a little animated. Right. And they don't, they, I don't think they get past the animation of the person and they hear everything, but they don't hear anything. They hear blah, 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 but they're not hearing the actual they're not hearing words. The words right. And the actual words may not even be malicious. Right. It may not even have a, 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 a negative undertone to it. It might just be that they're spirited because in that moment, that's just how they, where they're, where they're at with it. And they're not even being heard because... They put their defenses up because all they want to hear is, oh, something negative is coming and I got to be defensive. Or I'm listening just to respond instead of saying, all right, let me just listen to it and then decipher the information that I'm being presented with and then come up with a a, a response. That's when it that's when you start. That's when you're really doing your best, best work for a person. You know what I mean? And I think we all struggle with that, though. You know, you got some people who are amazing at that. You got some people who struggle with that. I'm one of the I'm one I'm one of the ones that struggle a little bit with, you know, the back and forth. You know, and, and, and that's just something that is always going to be continued to be working on. I've gotten much better, and I've I've, I've gotten much better than from where I'm at now than where I ever before. Oh my God, <laughs> wasn't I was crazy. I was a crazy person. I could see. I could sit back and, and critique myself. And be like, yo, I was wild, and and I still could be a little wild because you know what I mean. But as you get older and you see things from a different perspective, you like, yo, that's not going to be. That's not going to lend itself well. At the end of the day, you're going to be apologizing to somebody else, and you don't really want to because you know it is what it is. Yeah, but I think the good part part about that is is that your progress. Like, you know what I mean? You can you can see where you've come from and how far you've grown. That's the most important part of it. Yeah. And that you you know that it's still it's still growth to be had. Mm-hmm. Um it's it's individuals who who stay in a space where of, of non listening or um judgments or, or you know, things like that and they stay in that space. And then point the finger at you and be like, it's you, it's you, it's you. Um, but you're not listening. You're not actively attempting to be non-judgmental. Um, so it's good when we can recognize like our faults and the shit that we need to work on and, and be to be better friends, to be better lovers, to be better partners, to be, you know what I mean? Um, so I All right. So um, as, as we wrap this up, I want to ask both of y'all, do y'all think that it is better to... For for your specific person, do you all think that it is better to have that person be aligned with you or opposite of you? Mm, you gotta be aligned. Opposite opposition is 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 a negative. You can't accomplish anything if you're opposing me. Yeah, yeah definitely alignment is yeah. super important. I mean that goes all the way. And down. alignment don't always mean agreeing with me. It just means we just on a we there's a pl- a level playing field where we can have discussions of of all sort and understand it ain't gonna kill us. Mm-hmm. This ain't here to kill us, this here to this here to help Build us. us right. Yeah, this here to help us. And when we start looking at that, it's like, oh shit, 
I, I ain't gotta approach that like that. I can go a little bit softer. Or I ain't gotta let everything that that person say feel like a, a, a um. And everything in a fight, man. Yeah, I don't want. Fight. I'm tired of fight. <laughs> everything in a fight. I mean, we could yeah. we could fight sometimes because we're going to butt heads and things. But everything is not a fight. Everything's not a fight. Everything mm-hmm. is not a fight, man. Um, I want to get into ideology real quick, just because of where we're at in this conversation. So I want to ask y'all um, for ideology this week. Are y'all ready? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I need y'all both to dig deep and give the honest answers on these. So for ideology, I want to ask both of y'all. How many alter egos or personalities are in your head mm. and how do they operate? Yeah. I got like probably ten. <laughs> because I yeah, you know, I, I you know what? As y'all look at this show, y'all consuming this show right now. This is a this is a this is a, a character of now. Right. This is my this is a character of mine, right? We we all have characters. We all have different shades of us. So when you see me on here, I'm cool, I'm calm, I'm collected, I'm articulate, I can talk, I sound good, it sounds amazing, it sounds wonderful. Then you got the outside in the streets now who is down for whatever and will be with whatever. You got the caring now who wants to see everybody win. You want to see everybody make it. You want to promote and 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 forefront everybody. You want to help. I'm I'm a I'm a somebody. You said this on the show, long shows ago. No, you one of the ones who who likes to um, bring awareness to certain things. I love that. I love bringing awareness to my friends, you know, their businesses. I like bringing awareness to um, events that's going on that's going to help people, gather people, and make people better. You know what I mean? You got that aspect. You got the hard working um, as character that is me. That's always going to be that. So you got. I got a lot of layers, and I think people people. One thing I I will say is people will want to hold you to one specific right. character and think you can't be multifaceted. Right. You can't be this because if you're being that, you're being fake. I'm not fake. I'm I am him. Right. And you're supposed to have multiple multiple layers because if you don't, what are you? Just basic. I, I'm not basic. <laughs> I wasn't born to be basic. Facts. I wasn't bred to be basic. I don't move basic. Right. So why would I why would I stick to one thing or one trick pony? So I'm not that <laughs> because that's the reason why you like me because I'm not that. Facts. So you get a lot of me, and you get a lot of different me's for people who actually really know me, know me for a number of different things, right? I might have got on your motherfucking nerves, but you come back. I might we might have had an argument and disagreement, but you're still around. Why? Because it's something genuine that you felt. It's something real. It's something amazing that you felt that you, that you just can't get away from that. And that's me. That's that's every aspect of me. And yes, I do have a side that is a motherfucking monster, and I get it. But yeah, my I, hopefully everything else overshadows that to where when, if that comes out, you be like, all right, he's just in his bag. But I know once he get out of his bag, he cool. All right, Ish, how many people is up there? Mm. Really? Oh, yeah, okay. Ish. <laughs> um, I don't know. Like, off the time, maybe about five. <laughs> Throw the flag maybe at Ish. Five. Maybe about five. Maybe about she five. Hold it, hold it, hold it, hold it. Hi, Peter. Hold <laughs> Peter, hold Peter. No, no, but I nah, think Ish, my dog. a lot. But, um, I mean, you know, if we thinking about... Um, off the top, you know, it's definitely the the spicy ish, you know, the 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 spicy ish. That's the sexy portion of me, you know what I mean? Um, where I'm I'm free and comfortable with that. Then you got the motherly ish, where I'm trying to help everybody and make sure everybody is good and oh, you know, um, being pulled in different directions. Then you got the you know the 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 hood chick ish, like you know Southwest Philly ish. She ready to pop off and get like a monkey at any given fucking time and what let's have it. Then you got the you know the soft, the modest, the meek, the mild ish somewhere in there because she is in there, and that's more so in my in my um, partnerships and stuff. I'm, I'm that I'm her and those, and then you know you got the down to business ish. You know what I mean? The the one that's 
definitely putting on the business cap and, and getting shit done and knocking shit out and um and then I, there's a couple others too but you know i think that um us as individuals if we are not having and tapping into our alter egos as you stated or our other beings then we are not being true to ourselves because those individuals who try to conform and stay in just that one space because they feel like it's necessary or it's the right thing to do or because they feel like they got eyes on them or whatever they're not being genuine and true to themselves Facts. um i think that there's three different um alter egos i would say there's three different alter egos that have various personalities <laughs> so you know you have t which is like my normal everyday occurrence i'm probably just t that's like i'm gonna be cool i'm gonna be laughing about everything it's my regular most of the time self and then there's um i would call him now I might know this. <laughs> That's um, Playboy, sorry. Oh, <laughs> that, Playboy. That, that, that nigga is a, is a whole different... That's one other. more kiss. To you. <laughs> that, that nigga is a whole different other character. Like, he's charismatic, but he also smooth and, like, a little sly, underlying sly. But, you know, he's just a different animal. And then you have um, the junior... I'm not going to give y'all the, the name, but he's a junior. So the junior is has to uh, handle the business. He has to be a father. He has to be uh, a brother, a friend. He just has to handle shit. Yeah. So it's those three also egos, but they all have different personalities. Like sometimes T could be an asshole. <laughs> but you know it's just a part of but the people who know me know that I'm not doing it you know maliciously so there's three alter egos that have various personalities and I feel like um, I'm a very complicated person but also simple at the same time mm -hmm. so you gotta kind of like know me to get it uh -huh. and then You'll see how it falls, and then you'll see like anybody who knows me, they know who they got yeah. at that specific time. <laughs> like th that's how I think it breaks down. That's a that's a real good analogy because as I sit here and think about myself, like each ne each name has its own characteristics. Darnell is Darnell. Darnell is my birth name. Darnell is who I who I represent on a personal level. Darnell is who I go to work, and that's my. That's that's no that's our now. Right. That's my government. Right. Now is now is everything. Now is the friend, the homie, the the person you can depend on and count on. Darnell was that too. But now is something that I share with the world. Right. Not everybody knows Darnell because Darnell is personal right. and Darnell it has is you know that's family. That's my close friends. They know me as my by my government. But then they know Nell. All right, Nell was free spirited. Nell was tough. Nell was this. Nell was that. And that's what I shared to the world because that is that encompasses a lot. Um, and then there's then then there's D, and that's for a select few because only a few people call me D, like my mom and you know like that. So that's that. And then you got whatever else names is out there that you want to call me. Yeah, got it. <laughs> That's just for y'all two motherfuckers. Then we got then we got Diddy. Then we got Diddy. That's the that's the that's just like you know what I mean. I'm a, I'm a whatever, but he's, I think we so many he's, guys. He's got forgetting it. a very important one. He he's forgetting Dino. <laughs> oh man, <laughs> Dino. Yeah, that's my that's my, that's exclusively exclusively for my mother that's like she named me that you know like two people call me that my mother and my sister my little sister called me that and they call me that to this day i'm 43 years old and my mom will still call me dino like i'm a little dog or something or whatever, whatever. <laughs> but i love you mom thank you for um you know instilling the values that you instilled to me as regardless saying, of whatever name look, i am as you're saying that no i want to get the importance of 
just our nicknames in general. Yeah, man. Because people don't understand the importance of our nicknames. They don't understand the importance of our own mothers Uh (laughs) call us by our nicknames. (laughs) So they don't even understand the gist of it. And then they want to like stand out or want to make themselves feel special and they want to, I want to call you by your government. Yeah, that's a great that's a great thing because when I hear people call me Darnell, it, it startles me. Right. Because there's only a few people that call me Darnell and that's work. That's right. like my right. professional life. Right. But people at work don't even call me Darnell. Right. They call me Diddy. <laughs> like my people at my job, they call me Diddy. Like, so when I hear somebody say Darnell, that's real formal. Like, damn, what's yeah. what this? <laughs> and I know it's like somebody either that's professional or who really don't know me and just know me from just a business card or whatever or whatever somebody call me now i know all right they know me from seeing me on a show podcast they see me on front of the night they see me doing a number of different things that's why i introduce myself you i'm now you know me as d i'm like my mother must have told you that because right. <laughs> i don't share that right. and you know the importance of your nickname that the streets gave us time right I didn't get myself no. The streets gave me D no. And then they just dropped the D because we had two D's on the block. So we couldn't call me D and D. So they said D no. And, I, and I've been that ever since I was like seven years old because my homies named me that. And that follows you. And then people pick that up because that's who you are. You know what I mean? And, and nicknames mean something because it's an affection that somebody has given you because they, you know, that's what they see you as. How do you, how do you feel about... Um your use of your nickname, Ish? Um, yeah, I like Ish. Well, it started out Ishi. Mm-hmm. Like Ishi. Everybody, like my family still calls me Ishi. Mm-hmm. Like, and my oldest friends will call me Ishi. Um, and then, of course, then it broke down, like high school broke down to Ish. Mm-hmm. Nobody, like not even my boss, mm-hmm. my boss calls me Ish. Right. Like, he don't even say Aisha. Like, when he's referencing me to, like, obviously judges and things like that, that's different. But, like, nobody calls me Aisha, like, really. Um, it's a thing. I'm trying to tell people that this is a thing. Yes, yes. <laughs> and then my mom, she still reserves Mama Luch. Like, she'll call me that still. And that's, like, been with me since I was a little girl. Um, and that's exclusive, right? That's, right? Exclusive. that's exclusive. That's that an exclusive. My mom calls me that. Like, nobody else yeah. in the family, like, my brother's. Nobody else in the family. She's the only person that calls me that. Um, but they, it's gonna, it's gonna, it's been with me since little, and it's gonna probably be with me. And when I'm eighty, people mm-hmm. still be calling me Ishi. Do you feel like um, people cherish it when you give them a nickname? Yes, I do. I really do. And I'm a nickname giver. Honestly, if when I get comfortable with people, I like make up shit and just like give. Like special pet names. People, some people hate it. Though. Right. <laughs> some people really hate it. I'd be right. like, what? I like you enough to give you a nickname. Like, I got. I think that all depends on the name that you give them. Oh, <laughs> That's yeah. how I think yeah. that breaks down on the name that you give them. So, no, do you find yourself more or less um, calling people by their names, or are you giving them a nickname? Like all my homies, they got nicknames. Um. If I, if I fuck with you like that, yeah, you got a nickname. Yeah, like, I fuck with you like, I don't, it, when people say, um, how's Aisha to, like, how's Aisha feeling? Like, if she says something, I'm like, who the fuck is Aisha? Yeah, I mean. I'm not calling her that. Why are you calling her that to me? Right. She's Aisha. Like, why? You know what I mean? So, I be just so confused. Like, people are like, what? Aisha? I'm like, who? And I have to remember that's her name. Like, and I'm like, she cool. But, yeah, I give people names who I care about. Like, if you got, if you got a name for me, that mean I care about you. Cause like I'm not just taking the time to call you your name. That's corny. Like you know what I mean. Um, another part of that is a lot of y'all names be long as shit. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. Like I don't. I care I, about people. I say I give them a name. Like if I care about you, I'm gonna just give you a name. Like I'm sorry. Like, like if your name is like. What's a long ass name? Jawaka Matima. <laughs> yeah, like if you got a long ass name like that, like I'm not. Yeah, like if your name is like Jamera or something, like I'm yeah. not saying Jamera. Yeah, we probably saying Mira or something <laughs> like that. Yeah. yeah my twin niece's name is Jamera 
mirrors. Yeah. Like a lot of times, people names just be long. So it's just like, yo, I'm not saying that long ass name every time I address you. Like, what about your partners? Like, do you think it's like pet? Do you have pet? You do bae now? You just... No, you a baby person? Yeah, I bae. That's my bae. Like I call her bae. I don't even. I don't call her. I don't think I call her, her name. Her name. Yeah, it's like. Bad. Hey, what's up, man? Yeah, I wouldn't never call. I, I, what am I calling your name for? I'd be mad if, if somebody, like, if, if let's just say, like, if Tess was to be like, each what? Yeah, that's why. Like, what the fuck are you calling me my name for? Like, like what? No. Don't call like, me each. Don't call me each. That makes me think you mad at me. I can't. Um, yeah, call me my nickname, and I'm definitely calling you. By a nickname that I specific that I specifically that you, gave you, yes, specifically gave you, yeah, specifically gave you, yeah, yeah, I'm not, and it's different typically than their regular right. nickname, right, right, mm-hmm. right, yeah, that's that's how, I'm yeah, thinking. like a pet name or a yeah, nickname, that's. Thanks. So that was um ideology. Uh, let us know in the comments um how many alter egos and or personal. And yo, stop, yo, please don't be capping on this man. Thanks already, y'all. Yeah. We know y'all personally. Y'all got also egos. Man. Some some most women got like ten or fifteen people running in around the year. So keep it keep it a buck, and you know put it in the comments. Let us know how y'all feeling. Um, Ish, you said you had exclusive content, but I also have a quick exclusive content that just came upon me today that really shattered my chillingness. Oh. <laughs> So it came to me in the fashion of, well, this is exclusive content, people. It came to me in the fashion of, you don't know what your perception is of the people that are watching you. Uh And it tickled my left funny bone because I said, I don't give a fuck what people's perception of me is. Like, I don't know what you want me to do with that. (laughs) Like, I'm not going to change, you know, how I speak, how I view things. That is the purpose of me speaking because I'm giving you my view. It's not to be agreed or it's not to always be understood or... Whether your perception of me may be different than my actuality, I don't care to fix your perception of me. <laughs> like it just it's just not a factor to me. It's not something that I think about. It's like even when we address certain topics, I'm not gonna be like, let me see how I can address this so people don't perceive me this way. Mm-hmm. Who has that kind of time? <laughs> so what is y'all thoughts on um, are you aware of your perception and do you care about it? Mm-hmm. Would you, what? Do you, <laughs> is this, is this, is this my Aisha? I mean, <laughs> I mean, I mean, cause I know we've had conversations about this and I'm just joking. Um, no, but this is, this is, this is totally me. Like, there will be fucking times where I am just like, oh, I'm not going to do this. It's too much. I'm not going to say this because it's going to, somebody might get offended or it might not be somebody's cup of tea. I, I've gotten better and I've drawn myself a little teeny smidgen out of that. But I honestly definitely think about that shit a lot. It takes up a lot of energy. And I don't know if I really care about the people more than I do myself, how I'm looking. So, I mean, that's the problem for me. Yeah, that's the problem for me. I have to get better. Y'all send me a million shows. We want, what is this episode? 156. 156. Y'all send me while I'm at episode one. Oh, you'll probably send me while I'm at episode one. One. (laughs) <laughs> so that's me right. right I'm true to who I am yeah people will say yo you talk with such elegance and you talk with consciousness that's me too but I ain't I don't you're not gonna play with me and you're not gonna say nothing that I'm gonna sit here and not speak my real mind or, or challenge or you know what I mean and, and the time when we going back and forth people think I am such a, like a this big 
giant who's being abrasive. No, I'm just debating the point. I'm spirited. And my spirit sometimes gets gets lost in translation. Sometimes the way I talk gets lost in translation. But my real people know. That's why Isha say, yo, it ain't no beef. We just have a oh, conversation because yeah. she already know what it is. She know what who I am. And that, I don't have no problem like, uh-huh. like being responsive. For sure. It's when I'm thinking about shit. Like when we come with, with topics, like I'll say, I'm very mild when it comes to like the sex topics and shit. I don't get into a lot of things for perception. But if, if we go and at it, if we talk yeah, about it's a, it, yeah, it's a good Because it's not, it's no, and it's no beef. Yeah, exactly. It's just conversation. It's just yeah. talk. Like we can, you know, at the end of the day. Um, prior issues. I've understood something for a long time. I used to sit and say, "If I do this, I got a, I got an image to upset. Fuck that image, man. I, I like because my real core people know me, right? An incident a couple weeks ago, I probably would have came on the next show and I would apologize till I couldn't apologize no more. I can't do that anymore because at the end of the day, I lose myself. I lose. The clarity that I'm trying to speak with, the conviction that I, that, that, that I have. Again, I spoke on it and I said I could have handled it a different way. But that's it. We're going to say that and we're going to leave it alone and, and go about and, and go with your business. So when it comes to um, when we when we took the gloves off and we said, yo, ain't no more being passive. It ain't no more coddling. It ain't no more like entertaining people's feelings and emotions just because it sounds good or looks good i said we got it we out here because at the end of the day who are we trying to please when we're who are we trying to please but are we taking away from our own self as well when we're doing that so that was the question that was posed to me it was like so what if somebody thinks that you're like this or what if somebody thinks this about you and i was like i don't care like i'm not yeah in charge of how people perceive things. Yeah. Like, I'd be lost in those things. And so it was like, um, it was a thing of, well, do you really stand on, you know, all the things that you said? And I said, if I'm speaking from a personal standpoint, yes, I will stand on everything that I've said. Mm-hmm. And I say all those things repeatedly, so you can't say I never said it. Mm-hmm. And then also, like, they don't understand. Some people don't understand when I'm playing devil's advocate now. <laughs> like, they don't understand that. I'd be like, sometimes I'm purposely disagreeing with Nell mm-hmm. just to give the scenario, the full scenario mm-hmm. all around of what it could be. Yeah. That don't mean that um, I'm always an asshole. Mm-hmm. That just means that I'm showing you that there are some assholes on this specific thing. Mm-hmm. So I'm showing you the other side of what it could yeah. be. But some people don't understand, and they will say, "No, that is you." Mm-hmm. We always get hope. It, it, it's funny because people love to critique others, and they love to hold people at a standard that they don't hold themselves at. Because they'll say, "I'm flawed and I make mistakes," but you can't, and that's weird to me. Like, it's weird to me. That, and and again, I appreciate and I love everybody that supports us because that's what we're here for to t- to tell our story and also to entertain. But it's weird to me when our opinions get critiqued as if we can't have opinions, but y'all can have opinions on what we say. It's crazy, and I understand the moment you put something out there, it is for the world to have an opinion on. So my feathers aren't ruffled when you say something wild to me. Because I understand I put myself out there for me to be said something too. And that's what people don't understand. They put this up. They put something out there. People post things on social media. And the moment somebody goes against what they're posting, they're ready to cry or they're ready to fight or they're ready to go or they're ready to banish the world from it because it wasn't on the lines of what they wanted to have a response out of. And that's weird to me. It's like you put something out there, we're going to respond. That's what you wanted for, right? Because if you didn't, then why did you post it on a public forum? And it's just crazy. So I want to ask Ish. So Ish, um, you know, since you do do the sex tech, uh, segment or whatever, if a person, you know, perceived you a certain way and they thought that, you know, Ish is just a freak. She's out here. She's open. How would you feel if that was their perception of you? Because we know that that's not 
the full picture. <laughs> but if that if that was their perception of you. Well, absolutely. Um, I think that is a lot of people's perception of me. I don't really care. Because um, if I did, I wouldn't be in the... F- you know, I wouldn't have started Raw Honey. I wouldn't be doing what I'm doing. Um, I think I'm just a mindful of what I put out there, especially for some that might not be to that might not want to be exposed to some shit that I might want to expose people to. Right, but that's the part that I hate because yeah. I don't feel like you should have to shelter that. I yeah. feel like at this junction, like this is the segment where you can turn off. <laughs> like, I know. I know. We've talked about that. Right. We've talked about that and I definitely be feeling like I'll be pumping the brakes. <laughs> You know what I mean? Because, you know, it'll be some, some things and some people will be like, what the fuck is happening? Right. Oh. <laughs> oh, I'm going to tell you like this. I'm going I'm to I'm tell you like this. I can't be a, I can't be a part of any more of the the segments because I am going to church. <laughs> I can't. <laughs> Give them Peter each. Give them Peter each. <laughs> I'm trying to become a. I'm trying to become a deacon, a pastor. I'm trying to get. I'm, all right, you go throw this shit to me. Right. I mean, that might be the case, and if that you is the case, that. we gotta have to ask you to. Just yeah, I mean, exit stage, exit stage left, left. <laughs> exit stage left. So for the for the erotic zone and, and exclusive oh, content that might contain that. So, as I as I got a raw honey shirt, I'm talking about some I'm going, <laughs> that I'm going to see Jesus. <laughs> so as for uh, we we're not in control of how people perceive us, and and that's not nothing that I don't want none of us to cater to. Yeah. Mm-hmm. People like, have people gonna have opinions about us all day long, right. girls was good, good, better, and different, and that is what it is. Right, like I want. Everybody to be themselves and to speak however they feel comfortable speaking, mm-hmm. but also don't put yourself in a box because of how the outside is going to perceive it or judge you or whatever it may be. Because we we can't have an honest conversation if we do that. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Thanks mm-hmm. for sure. Preach. And, and that's what it is. Has spoken. The prophet has spoken. Yeah, man, you gotta do, you gotta be real. It's Thursday night, so we tape on Thursdays, but we premiere on Sundays. And hopefully, by this time, when you see this, your team would have hopefully won if they were if they were playing this week. Unfortunately, this team that I'm rocking on my hat won last week, so I had to honor my bet with a few people, which entailed me to wear an Eagles jersey and also Eagles paraphernalia. Throughout the different broadcasts, so shout out to my Eagles fan over here. Have you, have you done that? Did you do that yesterday? You had on actually raw honey yesterday. I don't raw honey. Yes. I don't raw honey, so it excluded me. But I came today with my my Kelly Green and my Eagles hat on. Eagles are on a bye week this week, along with Kansas City and a few other teams, um, as they look to get healthy to make the last bit of the NFL season um, memorable for them. And gear up for the playoffs. Um, teams that are in, in action this week. Um, if your team is in action this week, hopefully they won. You know, my Dallas Cowboys are still are playing. And by the time you see this, hopefully they would have won their week 10 matchup. Um, other than that, go check out. I, I'm going to leave. I'm going to say go on for six seconds for, for you. all I want you to go check out the show. It's absolutely amazing. It's hilarious. And it's education at the same time. And they've been showing, and, and one of the great highlights of this season, too, is they've been showing a lot of love to the ladies. And the show that I'm talking about is Game 7. With Tia and Mike, you know, they've been doing an amazing job preparing us for this upcoming NBA season that is now here with, with different, with, with old faces in new places. This season, we had a lot of movement over the offseason where it got a lot of players changed teams. And they helping us stay up to date with those players and what they do. Um, so shout out to them guys over there at Game 7. Go check them out. Every Thursday is at 7 p.m. Um, it's, a, it's an amazing, dope show. And also go check out, you know what I mean, the cast and crew over there at um, Telemade Kicks, man. We got a lot of great information over there for y'all. 
um, regardless of whatever. You know what I mean? We try to bring forth some great information on that show as well. All right, as we wrap up um, episode 156, I have an idea that just popped in my head just at this moment because this is something that I do um, normally with my family on Thanksgiving, even though it's still fuck y'all family, sorry. But it is what it is. Um, <laughs> uh, would y'all, what, what, what would y'all think about an idea of not just us three, but also, you know, our supportive people that be in the chat and in the in the comments doing a poly in it. Oh, that would be cool. Yeah. So y'all let us know in the comments if y'all would be open to doing a Pollyanna with the cast and the faithful people that are here in the chat and in the comments. We'll do a Pollyanna. If y'all are open to it, we'll do a Pollyanna for Christmas and everybody will have a person for which they are responsible of getting said gift. And the limit is a thousand. <laughs> I can't. We can't make the limit that high. <laughs> I can't start getting paid for my sex. I can't. You just got to start getting paid for our sex so she can get your gifts. <laughs> um, but this is episode 156, people. Make sure y'all like, share, subscribe. Hit that loud bell notification. Stay tuned. Um, intimate Conversations will be returning soon. Make it make sense. We'll be popping out with a new episode soon. Yeah. If anybody needs um, anything special for couple time or lonely play, you can always hit each up at rawhoneydrip.com. And we'll see y'all on the next time. Deuces.